members of the BAUS and Zoom attendees, it is an honor to be awarded the St. Paul's Medal and be asked to present the AUA lecture at this year's BAUS meeting. My approach to radical prospect of me then has been strongly influenced by my friendship with the late Richard Turner Warwick uh, and the introduction of the surgical robot. In 2000, as I started robotics, my focus changed from simply removing the prostate with the least amount of blood loss to imagining the operation as a reconstructive procedure, optimizing urinary and sexual function. In two seminal articles uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, the ProTech physicians looked at 10-year outcomes in a randomized trial con comparing monitoring, surgery, or radiation therapy. The first paper uh, dealt with oncologic outcomes uh, and the second with functional outcomes. In Jenny Donovan's paper in 2016, um, she looked at erectile function outcomes. My presentation will focus on the impact of nerve sparing on erectile function. Figure B shows the percentage of men who reported ED after radical prostatectomy. Two thirds of men undergoing radical prostatectomy complained of erectile dysfunction which is greater than men undergoing radiation therapy or on active monitoring. This slide looks at outcomes across other trials. Uh, the first trial being PROTEC, the second being SPCG4, uh, and the third being a study uh, from uh, Marty Sander in New England and Atlanta. At anywhere from one to 12 years of follow-up, over 80% of men reported that their erections were not firm enough for intercourse. These numbers were higher in patients undergoing surgery than in patients on watchful waiting. The surgeons in the PROTECT and the SPCG trial performed less than six radical prostatectomies a year on average. Perhaps expert surgeons would have better results. A, race, a recent paper looked at ED rates in patients undergoing radical prostatectomy at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. The reported ED rates were 83% at one year and 73% at two years, remaining constant over a 10 year period, which spanned the introduction of robotics into radical prostatectomy. Why are ED rates so high after nerve sparing radical prostatectomy? Perhaps this is related to an incomplete perception of the location and the complexity of the neural innervation of erectile tissue. Pat Walsh's original study showed two distinct neurovascular bundles at five and seven o'clock. These bundles are located four to 10 millimeters away from the prostate and can be preserved with superlative ease using robotic surgery. Yet, erectile function rates uh, uh, are not uh, uh, as wonderful as one might want them to be. An alternate concept is that the neural innervation of erectile function is more complex. Perhaps the earliest suggestion of this comes from studies done by the German anatomist Muller in the 1800s. Muller demonst demonstrated a plexus of nerves around the prostate, uh, which did not follow the course of the vessels into the phallus, but had a much shorter course, questioning the existence of a true neurovascular bundle this is further illustrated through the superb dissections of Tiwari and colleagues, which show that there is a neural hammock around the prostate. The nerves start posteriorly, course around the prostate anteriorly, and enter the cavernous tissue. One limitation of the studies that I have shown so far is that the nerves have not been trade, traced to the cavernous tissue in the penis, uh, and the dissections stop at the apex of the prostate. In a more recent study, Al Said and colleagues traced the nerves distally into the corpora cavernosa and spongiosum using immunohistochemical conformation and 3D reconstruction. While the nerves were located posteriorly at the base of the prostate, at the apex of the prostate, the nerves split, uh, split into two trunks, the posterior neurovascular bundle being traced to the corpus spongiosum and an anterior branch ending in the corpora cavernosa. Thus, the nerves started posteriorly, swung anteriorly, and entered the corpora cavernosa anteriorly. In an early study, we attempted uh, to have an augmented form of uh, neurovascular preservation. Uh, the red line 
follows the line of the original dissection for uh, uh, nerve preservation. Uh, on, on slide B, uh, the line is moved anteriorly and all the tissue behind the red line is preserved. We call this the veil of Aphrodite. It has also been called the high anterior release. This study looks at potency following radical prostatectomy using the two techniques. Uh, in each of these slides, uh, the control group and the study group, each patient is his own control. Uh, the blue area shows uh, the preoperative or the baseline erectile function, uh, and the tan area shows erectile function after nerve sparing radical prostatectomy. On the left side um, are patients who underwent traditional nerve sparing prostatectomy where the nerves at five and seven o'clock position were preserved. On the right side, patients had the veil of Aphrodite where a more anterior release of the nurse nerves was accomplished. Uh, and you can see uh, that uh, uh, the tan area, which represents maintenance of erectile function is lower with traditional nerve sparing than with veil. Uh, it, neither approach is perfect. If it were perfect, there would be no blue area. The tan area would clearly superimpose the blue area. Several years after performing uh, the veil nerve technique, we looked at uh, functional outcomes after radical prostatectomy. Uh, the top curve shows social continence. The middle curve in blue uh, shows complete urinary control. Uh, and the green curve shows the percentage of patients who achieved uh, sexual intercourse. And you can see uh, that while sexual intercourse was ultimately possible in the vast majority of, of uh, patients, the time to return of sexual uh, function was uh, far uh, um, slower than for urinary function. A more modern concept of the neurovascular bundle thus may show anterior and posterior trunks. This concept suggests that the nerves start posteriorly, swing anteriorly, uh, and end up with another trunk anteriorly. On the lateral surface of the prostate, the prostatic capsule is adherent to the levators, making it difficult to peel the nerves off the prostate. Thus, any attempt at total removal of the prostate in our minds will result in measurable nerve damage. Ahmed and Emberton proposed an innovative approach to prevent nerve damage. They introduced the concept or popularized or refined and made more elegant the concept of focal therapy for unifocal and multifocal prostate cancer uh, using high intensity focused ultrasound. Uh, on the second panel, one looks at erectile function rates in patients undergoing focal HIFU. Uh, at one month, ED rates were around 40%. By three months, um, potency rates improved to 80%, ED rates dropped to 20%. And uh, by 12 months, 39 out of 41 patients uh, had erections as defined as erection, erection sufficient for intercourse, not by SHIM scores. This seemed uh, as a very good uh, approach to maintain functional outcomes, but oncologists had questions about this. Firstly, in Ahmed's study, postoperatively, the rest of the prostate was not sampled, uh, and there was a question that there may be residual untreated cancer. Few patients could have a 10 to 15 millimeter margin between the nerves and the cancer. MRI lesions less than 0.5 cc's are never detected. And finally, no tissue sample is available for genetic analysis for future studies. In an attempt to improve on this uh, and to answer some of these questions, we performed whole mount sections in patients who would have been candidates for focal therapy. Uh, so we used the criteria for focal therapy that Ahmed and Emberton uh, had uh, described which was uh, uh, any cancer less than four plus three with a 10 millimeter margin uh, uh, free zone. Uh, and we tried to look and see in these patients who had radical prostatectomies, how many of them would have been cured by focal therapy. 
This is called an ideal uh, stage zero study. And we found that 96% of patients had peripheral zone involvement or cancer uh, within the five to 10 millimeter zone that would not be treated with uh, focal hypho. 55% of, pa of patients had cancer in the side contralateral to the dominant lesion and 20% were clinically significant cancer. We thought uh, that an approach uh, to optimize cancer control while maintaining functional outcome would be uh, to try to preserve the capsule on the contralateral side to the dominant lesion and the tissues between the capsule uh, and the seminal vesicle, in including both layers of Denovier's fascia. We hypothesized that this operation that we called precision prostatectomy would result in the preservation of more nerves than whole gland surgery, and that these nerves were functionally important. We referred to the work of Reeves and Costello, who created a high resolution map of the periprostatic nerves. They showed that there was a cluster of nitric oxide producing nerves in the space between the prostate capsule and the seminal vesicle. Since these nerves produce nitric oxide, they must be important uh, in erection. In order to identify if any of the capsule and denonvillius fascia can be preserved, and if they were free of nerves, we performed 3D mapping of the prostate using the Coelus Trinity ultrasound system. Um, these lesions are too small to be detected by uh, MRI, uh, so the only way that we could map them is using an ultrasound. A 3D ultrasound system is much more accurate uh, to precisely map this. Here is a brief video about what we tell the patients. This is an orange. Think about it as if this was the prostate gland. An orange has a peel and an orange has the flesh of the orange. The prostate has a peel. We call that the capsule. And the prostate has the flesh of the orange, which is the glands of the prostate. Cancers of the prostate start in the flesh of the, of the prostate, in the orange, if you will, and will then gradually extend out through the peel before they spread outside the prostate. The nerves that maintain erection are scattered through the capsule of the prostate. So would it be possible for us to find an area of the peel that did not have cancer? And if we were able to preserve it, would we be able to preserve more nerves and would that result in better function? And the answer to this is, Yes, yes, and yes. The video animation shows the zonal anatomy of the prostate in its four basic anatomic regions as described by McNeil. The view is from the abdominal cavity looking down into the pelvis, as during a robotic prostatectomy. It again demonstrates a large dominant prostate cancer lesion on the right side and additional sizable cancer lesions on the left side. The video clip demonstrates the pelvic fascias, the capsule of the prostate, and the veil of the nerves around the prostate forming a hammock. A significant proportion of nerves are invested close to the prostatic capsule and the denonvillase fascia, and are thus damaged during a radical prostatectomy. It is important to differentiate between the surgical planes for radical, simple, and precision prostatectomies. A radical approach removes the prostate with its capsule and periprostatic tissue to the level of the lateral prostatic fascia. The goal of a simple prostatectomy is to remove the adenoma that is mostly confined to the transitional zone, while the peripheral zone is mostly left intact and thus protecting erectogenic nerves on both sides. Whereas the plane for a precision prostatectomy cuts into the peripheral zone and deliberately leaves behind a 5 to 10 millimeter rim of prostatic tissue that maximizes removal of cancer foci while protecting erectogenic nerves embedded within the prostatic capsule. Here, we see a radical prostatectomy plane with conventional nerve sparing on the right side, the side of the dominant cancer lesion. 
On the contralateral side, the precision side, the dissection is started anterior to the vas deferens and seminal vesicle complex, while preserving all layers of Delonvier's fascia with the included erectogenic nerves. The dissection is then continued 5 to 10 millimeters into the prostatic capsule, deliberately attempting to leave behind a thin rim of prostatic tissue along with the seminal vesicle and ejaculatory duct complex. Here is a demonstration of the removed prostate specimen with its unilateral seminal vesicle and contained cancer foci. The prostate remnant is measured with the aid of a drop-in ultrasound probe. Systematic needle biopsies via a suprapubic or transperineal approach may be taken from the remnant prosthetic tissue and sent for frozen section analysis. Completion prostatectomy is performed if the frozen biopsies show residual cancer. The anterior bladder neck is transected. A transurethral Foley catheter is then pulled anteriorly towards the abdominal wall to provide retraction and exposure of the posterior bladder neck. The posterior layer of Denonvier's fascia is incised and a plane between prostate and perirectal fat is developed. The left prostate pedicle is dissected. Hemostasis is achieved by judicious use of electrocautery and clips. Dissection may be completed using the monopolar round tip scissors or hook. On the radical side, the seminal vesicle is dissected along with the vas deferens prior to being transected. The radical plane is developed laterally and posteriorly. Level of nerve sparing, standard or veil, are performed on the radical side depending on cancer burden and distribution. On the precision side, both the seminal vesicle and vas deferens are left in situ. The precision plane is started at the posterior midline, medial to the insertion site of the seminal vesicle to the prostate. This allows all layers of Denonvier's fascia to be preserved with the included erectogenic nerves. This plane is developed circumferentially up to the anterior apex. About a 5 to 10 mm rim of prostatic tissue is deliberately left behind. Apical dissection of the prostate is completed followed by transection of the urethra. The prostate is then removed via the gel point port for gross examination by manual palpation. The Aloka drop-in ultrasound probe is used to measure the dimensions of the remnant tissue and help guide the ensuing intraoperative biopsies of the prostate remnant. Systematic biopsies using a barred max core needle via a suprapubic or transperineal approach may be taken from the remnant prostatic tissue and sent for frozen section analysis. Completion prostatectomy is performed if the frozen biopsies show residual cancer. We use a 12 gauge angiocath for easier access. This is a radiograph that looks at uh, potency in control patients uh, and in patients uh, undergoing uh, precision prostatectomy. At four months, 41% of controls had penetrative intercourse, 33 had post-op shims of greater than 17. In patients undergoing MPP, 96% of patients had penetrative intercourse at four months, and 83% had a post-op shim of greater than 17 um, at the same time. Urinary continence was also maintained in patients undergoing MPP. Uh, the red line shows urinary control in patients undergoing the Bocciardi technique using the definition of zero to one pad. Uh, the yellow line shows the results with MPP. Uh, there is no difference between the two curves, thus preserving the prostate capsule is just as important as preserving the red CS. What are the oncological outcomes following precision prostatectomy? Uh, the median PSA was uh, undetectable at four months, eight months, 12 months, and 24 months. A Kaplan-Meier analysis indicated uh, that five of the first 88 patients required removal of their remnant prostate. Uh, four were done before 3D biopsies. Only one patient after the 3D biopsy uh, required removal of the remnant uh, for residual cancer, resulting in a survival uh, of 97.7%. Uh, of the patients who needed to have the remnant removal, all of them have detectable PSAs, 
uh, at four months, the median detectable PSA in these men was 0 0.4. Contrarily, all patients who had an undetectable PSA uh, had a cancer control. None of them needed the remnant removed. The results with precision prostatectomy compare favorably to results with focal HIFU. Uh, the oncological outcomes uh, uh, are superior. Uh, with focal HIFU, there is a 50 to 70 percent uh, uh, residual cancer rate. With precision prostatectomy, it's around 16 percent. Finally, I'd like to give credit uh, uh, to Claude Abou uh, and all the people who preceded us uh, uh, and showed us uh, uh, our way in robotic uh, surgery. As you set out for Ithaca, hope the voyage is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Thank you.